This show is brought to you by PMPNutritionAndSupplements.com, your one-stop shop for fitness and supplements to get you to your best life. The Jacksonville Free Press, providing quality urban news for more than 30 years. And Edward Waters College, preserving history, promising futures. From the campus of Edward Waters College, it's the Rockman Experience. The Rockman Experience. It's a brand new experience, a brand new time, a brand new way to do it. Hey, yeah, it's all mine. I'm the one telling stories you thought couldn't be told. I'm the one that bring you in your way, you shaking from the cold. I'm the one always out front, yeah, trying something new. I'm the one that's going to deliver when they ask what it do. Politics, entertainment, and science, all the news. Keeping you on the level with the stuff you can use. DJ Kids on the beat, Rock's got the track. It's the Rockman Experience, you know that's where it's at. Welcome to the Rockman Experience. Okay, so you're not hearing things. Welcome to this edition of the Rockman Experience. I'm Rockman Johnson, your host. And even though we usually drop on Wednesdays and it's not Wednesday, I wanted to share something with you as I started this journey and this process to creating the Rockman Experience. Now, this show has been in development for almost a year. Uh, I wanted to make sure I had the right topics to talk about, that I was able to get the right guests on the show, that it wasn't just something thrown together. Although there are many podcasts that are really good, I knew that the great ones, the ones that would work and that would get the messages out and tell the stories that I wanted to tell were podcasts that were thoughtful, that had some work, that had great cover art, and that you took your time to put together. So I didn't want to just put anything out in the street. And as any person who is in entertainment will tell you, I started with a pilot. And just about a year ago, actually just over a year ago, uh, I recorded a pilot show for uh, the Rockman Experience. And let me tell you, this is not my first pilot. When I was on Nickelodeon, I actually did a couple different pilots for talk shows with kids because that's something I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to do a talk show where we could talk about things that meant a lot to me, things I saw. Uh, I think my news judgment was pretty good, but who knows? However, doing a a show would allow me to experience that. So I really wanted to uh, realize the fullest potential of what a show could be by making sure that I did everything I could to make the show work. Uh, So the pilot that I did just over a year ago was just after... Donald Trump had been uh, placed into office as the 45th president of the United States. I sat down with some of the students in my learning community to really go deep and talk about the things that they were seeing, not just with the new president, but also in the news. Um, One of the things I think I found most interesting is that everybody had differences of opinion, but we were all kind of optimistic as to uh, what the future would bring. Now, one of the things I think I find the most interesting as well is the fact that they were willing to join me on the journey. And and notice I don't call them students all the time. I call them a learning team and refer to myself as a learning coach. Yes, I'm a professor. Yes, I have the degrees. Yes, I do the work. Yes, they have to do the work and they earn grades. But I focus less on giving a grade or or watching them earn their grades and focus on them learning the rubric of those things they want to do in their lives. And so that's why I call them a team. Many of the projects I do or or many of the assignments I do are project-based, which means having project-based assignments puts the students into a place of working together, which is what they'll do in the real world. And so that's why I call them learning teams and refer to myself as the learning coach so that I can coach them to their greatest good. Now, who knows? Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. But I tell you that many of my students are... Um, moving forward, doing some amazing things in their career. So this flashes back to me speaking with some of those learning team members just over a year ago. And if you want to reach out, talk to me about um, what you hear uh, in the show, you can always call us on the uh, hotline. It's 540-ROCKMAN-7, 540-R-A-H-M-A-N-7. Or you can tweet me or find me uh, on any of the socials, tweet me or Instagram me at Rahman J at R-A-H-M-A-N-J. Or you can also go on Facebook where you'll see this when it comes out and it's facebook.com slash Rahman J fans. 
Until I hear from you, uh, and we'll talk a little more about this at the end, here is a vintage show. And and again, I didn't even know what the show was going to be called yet. Uh, but I did know that it would be in some ways Rahman because the show is something I came up with. And, and it's about those things I found interesting. So we just called it Rahman, the Rahman show. But it became the Rahman experience. And I'm so thankful to the team that helped me pull it together. Nevertheless, here it is, a vintage Rahman experience, the pilot. Hey, what's up? It's Rockman Johnson. Welcome to this edition of Rockman here with the crew from Edward Waters College. But first, let's take a look at some of the happenings that are going on around the world. Just days ago, Donald Trump was sworn in as the 45th president of the United States. And the day after his installation, women from around the world marched with a rally that ended up being one of the largest rallies on the planet ever of women rallying for uh, girls and their movement forward. Also in the news today, two of Donald Trump's nominees for uh, the uh, members of his cabinet were confirmed, and there are still others. Two are scheduled to be uh, taken care of on Monday, and then there are others to be confirmed after that. So a little roundup of the news and all that's going on here with some of the crew. What's up, everybody? What's up? Hey. What up so let's start out with it. I'd like you guys to uh, introduce yourselves. We're going to just have a quick roundtable about the news of the world, what's going on, and I want to ask you some questions. So you are? DJ J. Motown from Detroit. I'm sorry, your name, please, sir? DJ Boy, what's your name? <laughs> Government name, John Sherrod See, from Detroit. do you see how we're trying? He's scared. They've got him scared already. He doesn't want to talk about it. This is where the show gets fun. Okay, and you are? Jada Griffin from Jacksonville, Florida. And finally... Like that, this one right here is the funniest chick I think I know. Yeah. Helena Smith from West Palm Beach. Wait a minute. Did you use your government name? In Call, me <laughs> <laughs> Call me Nina. Call me Nina. All right, so let's get right to it. This year uh, has been a very interesting year uh, that we've seen some major things go on across the board when it comes to politics in the United States. Uh, Bernie Sanders upset the Democratic Party, but he didn't bring home the nomination. Hillary Clinton did. Everybody thought Hillary was going to win. Donald Trump brought home a win and still been talking stuff the whole time. What do you guys think? I mean, is is it bad? Shouldn't we give Donald Trump a pass? No. Why not? Donald Trump is always bringing forth ignorance and just a lot of hatred. That's how he won. And I feel like, why fuel a nation like that? So I'm not going to give him his props, but he did win this election. So as a president, I'm going to see what he can do. But as of now, I still hold my opinion towards him as being a very ignorant man. Oh, wow. I mean, what, I mean, tell me what you really think. How you really feel. Wow. Okay. Okay. What about you? Anybody else? What do you think about this? I mean, this is a, a still a historic time in America. You know what? Uh, speaking about that rally from this weekend, yeah. I just want to let you guys know that that rally was huge when it came to the to, to the women. I mean, it was it was packed. They said it was about four hundred over four hundred thousand people that was out there rallying about the Donald Trump. The funny part about it is Donald Trump and his secretary, they came out, uh, Secretary Sean Spicer, he said, well, we had the biggest rally, and we had the biggest event, and it was bigger than Obama when he came out with his inauguration, and it, we got pictures to show it. So everybody's like, where'd these pictures come from? Because it wasn't that many people at his inauguration, like it was for Obama. But does it really matter? Sean Spicer, who is the, you're talking about, who is the press secretary for the president, uh, got in front of a room full of reporters and says, how dare you guys say that this wasn't the largest inauguration in history? Yeah. And there were pictures from 2008 or 2000, 2009 for Barack Obama's first election mm -hmm. and then again in 2013 for his second election. Mm -hmm. And it showed in the same spot how it was like covered with people and it wasn't a few days ago. I get it. I hear you. But is it really important? You know, one of the things I guess that everybody's saying with Sean Spicer is that, look, dude, that's not an important number. The numbers that matter matter how many people have jobs, all this stuff, not how many people attended the inauguration or not. Because at the end of the day, Donald Trump is still president of the United States. Yeah, there's social media president. He's a, he's a celebrity. I think it's important to him because he's a social media president. So you're saying he's <laughs> having the people. That's kind of like likes. Yeah. Yeah, he's all about likes. He's all about likes. He's all about lies and likes. Like, he needs to be called President LL. Lies and likes. You, you stupid. <laughs> <laughs> he said lies and likes. Okay, I hear you. I hear you. What about you, big man? Um, I think I'm going to have to be that guy. I feel like being that we've had 43 Caucasian presidents, that was kind of 
not necessarily racist, but they were just like Donald Trump. Yeah. It's just that he's a little bit more blunt than they are. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't really make that much of a difference that we have one more white president out of 43. All right. We, th- very interesting. Very interesting. Let's take a break. Check out some music. Uh, we'll be right back in just a few moments. More of the show with the fellas, the, the ladies. Y'all ready for some more? Woo! All right. We'll be right back in just a moment.
Saturday mornings were like full of Otis Redding. Then Joan Hart and Holland Oates and oh gosh. And my brother banging Bob Marley. And, <laughs> and when I discovered the coolness of hip hop, man, the feeling was just Black sheep. I mean, oh my gosh, a tribe called Quest, and oh my gosh, Sarah Vaughn, and all those amazing people. Music. That was my dear friend and one of my favorite songs on the air right now. Of course, that was not a part of the Vintage Show, but I wanted to share it with you since we had a break for music. That's MJ Baker and Feel Something. MJ Baker is an amazing artist who will be making her way to the Rockman Experience very soon. We've set it up, and she'll be coming on to talk about her project, her poetry, her music, and all of those great things. You can find her anywhere online by just looking up MJ Baker. Her music is available for purchase right now on all of the major purchasing platforms. But check her out if you like soul and jazz and poetry and just music with feeling you will absolutely adore mj baker and even if you like hip-hop you're gonna love mj baker because she's just that kind of artist anyway back to the rockman experience a vintage show all right we were talking about uh Women's March on Washington, just before the break, there were hundreds of thousands, maybe some estimate millions of women. In fact, I was watching one of the reports that said women couldn't even move. They were they just had to stand there for like an hour or more or two because there was gridlock. They couldn't even move like a step in either direction, which was definitely not the case at the inauguration. But these women were marching for their rights, for freedom. Um, right now, we do know that the president can, uh, will have a seat on the Supreme Court to a point which could jeopardize Roe versus Wade and abortion. So as a woman, do you think, Nina, and a rapper and, a, and an activist, um, do, like a woman's right to choose and, and do what she wants to do with her body is pretty important, which is one of the reasons why the women were rallying. By the way, the signs were off the chain. I have to leave some of the signs that they, they put. I mean, they, they were just off the chain, those signs they had this weekend. But was it important to you? And did you, were you in solidarity with those women who were marching for those kind of reproductive rights and women's health rights and those kind of things? And, and why was that important for women to do that? It's definitely important for women to fight for their rights because, you know, we were the last to get them in a way. But I mean, it's all in what you want to do. If, if you want to go out there and give up your blessing, then that's on you, but... Ooh, that's kind of harsh, isn't it? I mean, that's real, though. <laughs> like, you be real. Like, that's why I want you... I want raw, real, unadulterated. Okay. So... Say what you want to. Say what you feel. It's real. Yeah. Be y'all so real. <clears throat> so, I feel like, ladies, hey, you have to just take charge, and whatever you want, you have to go for it. And if you want to be president of the United States, well, you try. Like, what, let me ask you this question. This is a controversial question. The word, which I hope I'm not going to offend anybody here. So I'm telling you now that I'm using the word that was put on signs that was said. Remember that infamous comment that the president supposedly made, grab them by the pussy? Yes. And a lot of women had the word pussy on their signs. Like, yeah. don't grab my pussy, it grabs back. Like, I mean, they were yeah. like, I said that. <laughs> signs were so crazy. So a lot of women are saying, I'm going to use the word, kind of like Amber Rose did with slut, which is why she had the slut walk, to take the power back from the word. Right. Right? What do you guys think about that? Because to me, um, you know, some of the women said, hey, it's important for us to take the power back that was given with that word. I think it's dope. How about you? I think it's, it's cool, you know. It depends on if you want to be that woman that wants that power. Some women are okay with being just there not really having anything to say but if you want to be that powerful woman then go for it okay how about it i think it's dope how women are taking that word back and using it with the protest taking his words to fight against him with it i will um feel like it's very empowering because these are women who are not going to sit here and be submissive not going to stand with the status quo of okay, well, he said that and it upset us, but we're not going to do anything about it. No, we're going to have all these women come together to prove this movement that 
we are we are real people. We are here. We're here to make movements, and we have, and we're going to continue to make the movements. And this old wrinkled Cheeto man is not going to change. That. Oh wow, <laughs> Cheeto man. <laughs> so <laughs> I want to change gears for a bit. So we know that we we and we may get to politics. It depends on where the conversation goes, but. One of the biggest things in the world happened last night, right? There was a, what some would call an upset, and we have the teams that are going to be playing in the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 51 this year. Um, no one, I don't think, could anyone have expected Atlanta to be in the Super Bowl? Now, yeah, they no, played no. some good football this season, but nah. I don't think anybody anticipated that the Dirty Birds would make their way into the big game this year. Mm-hmm. Um, the Dirty Birds, what do you guys think about it? I mean, what, what, what do how did you feel? I know last night as I was watching the Pittsburgh game um, and, and, and New England, um, you know, you, you look at both of those teams, marquee teams, they've done well. Uh, Pittsburgh did not play good ball last night. Did you guys watch the game last night? I mean, there yeah. were so many turnovers and fumbles. I can't even get into it. Maybe it was just cold because it was just not good. I, I, but was this the Super Bowl that you guys thought? Anybody think this would be the Super Bowl matchup? I actually did not. That was, that was surprising. I was really for the I Cowboys, mean, between Green Bay and the Falcons, I mean, I, I I think everybody pretty much thought Green Bay had that game in the bag. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, the Falcons obviously came to play, <laughs> and the end results was what it was. Atlanta went crazy. Let me tell you, everybody. Usher. I was I was on Instagram and Twitter last night. Usher, Candy. Um, so many people were just going crazy when it came. What about to... the guy in the Power Ranger suit? You know that that one guy be in a blue Power Ranger suit with the cowboy boots. He was in the middle of the gas station doing his little uh, dance with the Falcon shirt on. Y'all got to check it out. Social media, it's funny. Gotcha. We got to we got to tweet it out there. Tweet, tweet it out. Tweet I gotcha. Got so, any predictions for the game? Patriots. By how many? Oh, that's a deep one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta think about that. Patriots Patriots gonna win only because the the owner's already turned up. Like, the owner was drunk. Y'all seen that interview with the owner being drunk? It's been 18 years (laughs) since Atlanta has been to a game. 19, hey, it don't don't, don't matter. So you don't think Atlanta's gonna come trying to do something big? It's it's definitely gonna be an interesting game, but the Patriots, this is not their first go around, so... This is Atlanta second, and I think they want to make history. The Patriots have been nine times or have won nine times in the past. Did y'all know your stats? Come on, know your stats, baby. And the Falcons ain't bigger since 1999. We ain't got time for no newcomers on this. This ain't no newcomer. This is a return to the glory, man. (laughs) Nah, man. Brady's not going. Brady's not going to take that one too late. You know what I'm saying? Ladies, ladies, weigh in on it. What do you think? Dirty birds. Dirty birds is where it's at. See? Nah, nah. Cause I mean, they're playing technical football. They're saying like these guys are gonna play with heart because last night, as no one predicted, no one predicted for Pittsburgh to, to fall the way they did. Listen, you're playing with heart, but we playing with a white guy. You ain't gonna beat Brady. White guy always wins, no matter what. Just remember that guy. The man always wins. Brady gonna win. Moment of silence. 2008. <laughs> There's just silence. <laughs> Barack Obama. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Be the white guy. It's it's not that. I think it's that. I'm just saying. After after seeing what the Falcons did to Green Bay, yeah. I think the Patriots are going to be ready for them. They're not underestimating them okay. at all. Okay. We'll see what happens. It's going to be the big game comes up um, in Houston in just a few weeks. And by the way, one famous name that said he was going to try to make it to the game, 92 years old, George W. Bush, which is the, the first George Bush, President Bush 41. Uh, he's been in the hospital for the last couple of weeks, and he and his wife were both in the hospital with pneumonia. She, he had pneumonia. She had a bronchial infection. He's 92 years old, but he says, I'm getting up out of this bed, Wow! and I'm going to the Super Bowl. Because, I mean, he lives in Houston, so it's in my city. I'm going to go to the Super Bowl. Oh, that's Bowl. cool. Yeah, yeah. That's so a big deal. We're wishing speed recovery to President George Bush, uh, and hopefully he gets back on, uh, on the move. All right, so in entertainment, let's switch gears again. Um, there's some really interesting stories, uh, things I've been watching uh, that, that's happening uh, in the entertainment world, uh, besides the fact that everybody's looking at Atlanta uh, right now. Just just speak, speaking about Atlanta, it's funny because you have Soulja Boy that grew up in Atlanta. You have Chris Brown from Virginia but grew up in Atlanta. Right. And all of a sudden, they're over here fighting because of California turf. So speaking of Atlanta... Who is really from Atlanta or who's from California? But either way it goes, we got a fight in March with Soldier Boy and Chris Brown. And I can't wait to see that. Tell us about the fight. So about the fight. 
basically, long story short, um, we got two crackheads. No, I'm not playing with you guys. We got Chris Brown. We got Soldier Boy. Crackhead look alike. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> they, uh, they're arguing. Of course, it's always going to be about a female, about uh, Karuchi. Of course, it's always going to be about a female. So, you know, they was arguing about who likes on what, what pictures. So now they want to fight. A big, huge fight is going to go on in March. And uh, I think, who's Mike Tyson? Mike Tyson is training Chris Brown, Chris right? Chris Brizzy. And then we got Mayweather training. Money team. Yeah, money team Mayweather training Soldier Boy. And the fight's supposed to go down in March. Uh, 50 Cent is the promoter for it. And it's supposed to be actually in Las Vegas. Who you got your money on? Y'all really need some attention, don't y'all? <laughs> I'm just saying, like, who you, who you got your money on, Mo? Y'all need, they need attention. Like, are you serious right now? I mean, honestly, Soldier Boy kind of initiated the conflict. And you know Chris Brown, he he wasn't trying to feed into it, but then, you know, he brought his daughter and his uh, past relationships into it, which kind of made it worse. So, I mean, it is what it is. I guess. What about Mike Tyson? Though you heard uh, Mike Tyson made a diss record on Soldier Boy too. Personally, I, I like that kind of entertainment. <laughs> First of all, I think Chris Brown may have this one in the bag. No lie. Yeah, Team I'm with Chris you on Brown. that. I'm with you on that Team one. Chris Brown, yeah. Okay, moving on. I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, none of them are interesting. So the fact that Chris Brown and Soldier Boy are gonna like have a fight, but but but, but who I, cares? But it's, a, it's a it's a it's a bigger meaning behind it, though. So people don't talk about that. So what's but, the big meaning? About Chicago, they always shooting each other. So what they saying is they say put down the guns and put up the gloves. That's there's a try or to go like in a- and make a fake video in the hood, like you getting jacked <laughs> and you got street cred. <laughs> they say exactly. they sold Jay from the hood. <laughs> Bro, that's not your line. <laughs> Did y'all see the video? Yeah, man, that's my line. Yeah. I was like, Bro, really, bro? Come on. But but it's the good thing that they fighting because in hip hop they used to rap or they used to fight, but now they're just shooting each other. So it's kind of good because it's like, look, man, you talking all that junk, yo, you gotta put the gloves on. It ain't no, it yeah. ain't no need for us to die. But like, hey, we gonna fight this out. I think it's a good positive meeting. Yeah. Guns down, gloves up. You know, there's no need for no gang violence or anything like that. Because I know they was kind of leaning towards gang violence, especially Soldier Boy talking about uh, being blood and all this stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Saying Chris Brown hasn't checked in the hood with, you know, in forever and stuff like that. So, you know, Chris Breezy's trying to, uh, I don't know, facilitate the situation by getting in the ring instead of, you know, do you know that the two minutes that we've spent talking about them are two minutes that you'll never get back in your life again? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like, I, I just need you yeah, to know and understand this. Okay, back to the lecture of hand, which is fine. I mean, I don't know that I choose either team. I, I probably won't watch. A show of hands, there are four people, five people in the room. How many will be watching this bout? Oh, I'm watching it. Chris Brown and Soldier Boy. And one person raised I would, their hand. I, I, I would love to watch it, but if it's on pay per view, I'm not. I'm not you paying for that I'm foolishness. No, I'm not no, paying for that garbage. No, no, in the words of oh, Bishop Bullwinkle, yeah. "Hell to the no, no, no." <laughs> <laughs> <Hey, dude>, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, back to Donald Trump again, because you know the brother stays in the news, and yes, I did call him a brother because you know that color is the brother color. <laughs> Nevertheless, so uh, we're told that Donald Trump didn't ask. Kanye to perform, even though he did ask Kanye to meet with him. And Stacey Dash, there's the name. Did you guys hear the latest on Stacey Dash? She's you know, fired. She got fired from Fox News. And so people drugged them both on the internet saying, yes, yeah, see what happens when you go cooning? I mean, that's what some people were saying on Twitter and, and, and Facebook and Instagram. They were drugged. What do you, do you think that Stacey Dash got her comeuppance? I think so. I think Stacey I think Dash deserves everything that she gets to her. She hasn't been on Fox News Station since September. Did you know she's 50? She's beautiful. Oh, she's, she's a beautiful 50 year old. I give her that. But I remember her from that movie. Clueless. Clueless. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, she does not look 50 years old. No, nah, not at all. Yeah. Not at all. But, but then you get past that and then the crazy just come out and then just rock. She's going through a midlife crisis. That's what it is. No, that's big no, crazy. No, no, no. She, she just wants the money. She messed up. That's on her. That's on her. Yeah. That's on her. <laughs> <laughs> but a good point, though. Remember, Mayweather was at the inauguration, though. So what about that? I mean, you know, Mayweather, he's all about the money team. So wherever the money is... That's what well, he that's is. That's what we're talking about this morning. That so. man done been knocked in the head so much he probably thought he was at Ringling <laughs> Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. He didn't know he was there. <laughs> but but don't, don't y'all see that kind of being unfair? It's like if if we get mad with every black person, like why Kanye got to do this? Why Steve Harvey got to do this? 
But then Mayweather, he said at the inauguration, why we we still gonna see him fight though? Because nobody wanna get them hands. <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants to see him fight anymore. <laughs> Nobody's doing Fine. this. It's like when you fight. win so many fights, like nobody wants to see fights. But anymore. like then, I mean, like listen, we do hear Steve Harvey speaking and Kanye speaking. Have you actually sat down and listened to Floyd Mayweather speak? Ignorance. <laughs> Is that yeah, something ignorance. that you're gonna like do on a he regular basis? He speaks basis? well. He just sucks at writing and reading. I'm, I'm, I, he says some smart stuff. We're gonna have a moment of silence and marinate on that. <laughs> this man funny. just said he speaks well. He just can't read and write. Uh, <laughs> he he makes a lot of points. When he speaks, he says a lot of quotes, and it makes sense. It actually makes sense. He says a lot of smart stuff. He's a businessman. His business ventures are so smart. Sense. They make sense. It must be high. You know, I pass I on. Gotta be high. I pass on grass. <laughs> but, uh, I pass on grass. That's a good one. Thank I'm you. just That's saying. Right. Like, yeah. are you serious <laughs> right now? I pass on grass. All right, we got more to come. We'll be back in just a moment. I pass on grass. People are always looking to invest in a good opportunity. So what if you could invest in the future of kids, like a stock? Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change called Better Futures. With your investment, it helps students like me go to college. My name is Charles, and I'm your dividend. Invest in Better Futures with UNCF. Visit uncf.org slash invest. A mind is a terrible thing to waste, but a wonderful thing to invest in. Brought to you by UNCF and the Ad Council. All right, we're back. Uh, continuing to move on. <laughs> so we were talking about Floyd Mayweather and, and his attending the inauguration, and you said he didn't get any backlash, but it's not really anything to backlash because what is he doing, right? And yeah. who is he getting back at? Uh, yeah, there you go. So He's getting money. Uh, oh, uh, yes. He's, get money. Yeah. Mayweather's getting money. There you <laughs> go. <part>. Okay. <laughs> um, so Stacey Dash, Kanye, not an inauguration, and, and their, uh, Chrisette Michelle was one of the performers. Nicole. What do we say about that? That's the one they said that was that sang better than Beyonce. Who said that? Nobody said that. No, no, no. no. There no was definitely said, a video. No, no, that was, said that. no we what, talked about Jennifer Hudson. What probably. video? What video was that where they was like saying that she sung better than Beyonce? Who said that? No. No. I, I gotta go back She's on my the social one that hasn't media. She's been relevant in years. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And they're feeling on. like she only came. Let me get, let me get on the social the media now. She, get her let me get on the social media because they was definitely about talking about that. This person just said Toby Keith is way better than Beyonce. <laughs> I j- I'm telling Who you what the Toby? man said. Who is Toby? Toby? Toby. It's not like a slur. My response: Toby, right? <laughs> That lady <laughs> has been Toby. drinking Molly water. My, Molly Miley Water? Is that She's what it been is? drinking Miley Water. All right, two final stories, and then we're going to head out. Uh, first and foremost, Tyson Beckford. Ladies, Tyson Beckford. Oh, woo. Sexy, sexy. Wow. One just made it up, and the other rolled her eyes. <laughs> well, Tyson Beckford's about to do a residency hmm. at Chippendales in oh. Las Vegas. Did someone say Chippendales? Yeah, that's, that's, that's <laughs> right there. Hey! Tyson's gonna do a, a residency at Chippendales in Las Vegas. Make you like it more, make you feel him. Hey. Is he just Tasman? Um, is... Now, if it was Childish Gambino, that's a whole nother stuff. Well, he, now, that's a little weird there, but okay. Go ahead, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so, no thoughts about Tyson Beckford? Hey. Um, you know, Tyson Beckford, he's a nice-looking gentleman, but I just... I just don't know him as a person. Like, it just seems like he's just a mom. Just an ass. Yeah. <laughs> Not a set of abs, just an ass. Like, does he have his own brand? Or... He does. What? Tyson. That sucks. Have you more? <laughs> like, the vacuum cleaner? Tyson. No, that's Tyson. No, yeah, he's Tyson. Oh, wow. Uh, I, I, I don't know who he is, Tyson. honestly. I, you know. He's a model. <laughs> he's an actor. Was he in Biker Boys? No. I want to say that he was in that Medea movie. Hmm. As an extra. You know. <laughs> 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 All right, oh, Chance man. the Rapper. Any Chance the Rapper fans yeah. in the house? Yeah. Chance does good stuff, puts yeah. good music out. So Chance's yeah. brother just came out a couple days ago as bisexual. Oh, good and, for him. and so the question is, some people are saying as a bisexual American um, that you're being greedy. Um, and, and Chance actually, yeah, they're, they're, they're saying you're being kind of greedy. Chance actually supports his brother fully. He, awesome. he has said, hey, I'm here, I love my brother. Chance has actually said he loves his brother fully, that he really wants to, you know, make sure that, that these issues, that they get brought to the forefront. What do you think about that? I mean, is it uh, now hip-hop accepting to the LGBT community even more today? Hmm. I, I mean, you got it, you got it, baby. honestly, <laughs> I, I, I would have to say, yeah. 
I mean, I mean, there's been allegations about Young Thug, but I mean, I don't think that's true because, you know, he has a beautiful girlfriend. But I mean, on the other side, this man likes wearing dresses, getting his nail painted and all types of other things like that. And it's kind of hard to tell. Well, for one, there's men who are married and who are gay. But we're just going to leave that right there. Yeah. <laughs> um, but for Chance to be supporting his brother, I think that's beautiful. Um, for one, with the black community, I love how I see brothers, even if you're not blood, supporting each other. Like, if that man wants to do that, let him be. And all you can do is support him and let him grow. Like, if that's what he want to do, let him do it. Don't have anyone telling you what you can and can't do. And it's something he was thinking about for a while. Uh, these are the tweets that he came. Uh, his name's Taylor Bennett. He said, my birthday is tomorrow. And moving into next year, I'd like to be more open about myself to help others struggle who struggle with the same issues. Growing up, I've always felt indifferent about my sexuality and being attracted to one sex. And today, I would like to openly come out to my fans. I'd like to recognize myself as a bisexual male, and I do and have always openly supported the gay community, and will keep doing so in 2017. Thank you. And he came out via Twitter. I mean, there's no better way to come out. Right, because you don't really, really, you don't have to read the comments. You can, you know, you don't have to put anything out there. And everybody has come out. Um, Chance, the rapper, his brother responded, uh, I love this man right here through any and all. He has grown into a great man. He's got God and me behind him. He cannot fail. He cannot fail. Brotherly love. Good stuff. Yeah. Shouts out to you, Chance the Rapper. At least he's telling the truth. Yeah. Well, it's always good to support your family members, you know, because family should be first and you should always show your family how much you love them. Exactly. So... Good job, Chance the Rapper. Way to end on a good note. All right, guys. Any final words before we get out of here? Catch me outside. How about that? <laughs> Say what up, though, when you see me in the streets. Have a great day. Be great. Peace and love. Oh, uh, Big Fluffy talking to you, Big Fluffy. Say, be great. See you square, always in the moment. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. We'll definitely catch you next time on Rockman. Well, there you have it. That's how the show started and developed. And it was just us sitting around having conversations about things going on in the news. And that class was called I Am The Plug, right? It's my version of uh, communicating with Gen X, Gen Y millennials. And it started with my class, my hip hop journalism class, sitting around having conversations about all of those things that were happening on a daily basis in the news. And sometimes that's all it takes for a great idea is just to flush it out and not run too quickly. You know, uh, there was a story I heard about the bulls, and uh, these these two bulls were on the top of a mountain, or on a hill, let's not say a mountain, and the young bull turns to the old bull, and they look down the hill, and they see this grove of cows. And, you know, of course, bulls like cows, guys like girls. And the young bull says to the old bull, Daddy, Daddy, let's run down the hill and get one of those cows. And the old bull, having wisdom and knowledge and understanding, as my grandmother would say, turned to the young bull and he said, son, how about we walk down the hill and get them all? (laughs) And so I kind of took that uh, piece of advice to heart when I began this process because I wanted to make sure that I had the best that was put out for you. It reminds me of one of my favorite books, and I read a lot, but one of the books I love... uh, to quote uh, the five agreement or the four agreements and then the fifth agreement, um, Don Miguel Ruiz, and of course his son Jose Ruiz. But one of those agreements is always do your best. And even though I thought the show was good, I knew it wasn't my best. And what you can tell from each show, uh, I try to beat the competition. And the competition, it's not other podcasters, it's not other news anchors, it's not other, other actors, it's not other people. The competition is me. So I want to make each show better than the other show before because that's the only way that I can give you my best. And that's my job, to give you my best. And that's all I can do. And I will tell you, in this journey, I've learned so much uh, how to do things technically that a year ago I didn't know how to do. Uh, I was going to pay someone to do the podcast, but the beautiful thing is I, I started doing it myself. And Like another book I read, The Alchemist said, when you want something with the entirety of your heart, the entire universe will conspire to help you achieve it. 
And it's right, like getting a theme song and having people around me to push this thing forward. And it continues to grow and evolve. So I'd love to hear from you what you think about the evolution. And of course, a quick teaser. The next show coming up is all about CBD. Yeah, CBD is the compound that comes from hemp that would would it be the female side of the marijuana plant. Marijuana has THC and it does have uh, hallucinogenic and psychoactive effects, whereas T, uh, CBD has none. But you get all the medicinal benefits, the calming nature, the relief from pain. Uh, in fact, a uh, quick story, I knew someone who had Achilles tendon surgery and after the surgery, they were on opioids, but they on day two, they couldn't deal with the opioids because they could feel themselves becoming addicted and took CBD and made it through the recovery process with not another opioid. Pretty big, huh? So we'll talk about that with my little brother, Akeem Washington, who is much bigger than I, but he's still my little bro. Anyway, it's a great show. You got to tune in. Uh, and pass the word. If you like the Rockman experience, tell others about it and let me know how we can make the show better. The number is 540-ROCKMAN7. That's 540-R-A-H-M-A-N-7. And your calls just might make it on the air. Also, you can find me on all the socials, Twitter at RachmanJ, R-A-H-M-A-N-J, Instagram, same name, R-A-H-M-A-N-J, and on Facebook, facebook.com, slash Rockman J fans. It's been amazing spending time with you. I look forward to you catching the uh, real show, I'll say. <laughs> and uh, I guess this show would be a point five because it's not a full show. Anyway, uh, we'll catch you for another other show. Stay in touch. And uh, thanks for joining me inside the Rockman Experience. The Rockman. It's a brand new experience, a, a brand, brand new time, a brand new way to do it, hey yeah, it's all mine. I'm the one telling stories you thought couldn't be told, I'm the one that bring you in your way, you shaking from the cold. I'm the one always out front, yeah, trying something new. I'm the one that's gonna deliver when they ask what it do. Politics, entertainment, and science, all the news. You on the level with the stuff you can use. DJ Kids on the beat, Rock's got the track. It's the Rockman experience, you know that's where it's at. Uh,